So welcome to a kind of a playthrough or how to play video. And this is for Plains Indians Wars. And this is uh, from John Ponisk. This is actually on P500 on the GMT website as of recording this video. Um, so we just kind of want to show you the board, show you at least, this is a play test kind of prototype copy. So this isn't what your final production is going to be like, but we can show you how the game plays. Now, if you've played any of Academy Games' um, Birth of a Nation series, things like 1775, 1812, this uses a very similar style of mechanic uh, to, to that game, where it's kind of, you've just got cubes on the board, different factions, they've all got an individual deck, and it's about capturing regions for victory points. The difference with this game is, is there's a lot of other stuff in there as well. Just to give it some heavy flavor, a bit more strategy to it, and I think that you'll kind of see a lot of what that is. Um, as you look at the map here, it's divided up, this is kind of, you've got St. Louis here, and then you've got kind of the west coast, you've got the Rockies, and this is Northern California. So the US based faction, which are these blue cubes for the cavalry, the brown cubes are settlers, and then they have yellow cubes, which are kind of wagon trains. And then that faction also controls these purple cubes, which are just a, they're smaller Indian tribes that are warring with the uh, orange and red tribes. This faction over here is the red cubes and the orange cubes. The orange cubes, you can kind of see this half of the board is orange, and this half is red. This is um, Southern Plains Indians and Northern Plains Indians. So one player is going to control red and orange, Another player is going to control all the other colors, frankly. The US-based player is trying to get the wagon trains all the way to the west coast off this end of the board, and they're also trying to build Transcontinental Railroad. And eventually you're going to have it be up, that's going to trigger at least one way to trigger the end of the game. Um, there's victory points for completing the railroad, three victory points. If they don't complete it, it's actually, th um, it's, well, it's not negative three, but it's three victory points for the Indians player. Um, the card, the game is, it's a, it's a card driven game, so each player has this kind of stack of cards. There's I think 15 cards in each deck, so it's, it's not a lot. And a, a lot of the cards will kind of go through here. There's a, there's a few different types. You've either got these migration cubes, which put guys out and allow you to move other guys. Or there's these kind of text based cards, where it says, use it as a reaction. Uh, you kind of play out of turn to do something or you can kind of use it generically to move two guys, two spaces. Um, let's see what else we got here. Use for its text. This is just kind of a special card um, just to put out dudes kind of out of turn. But a lot of it's these migration cards, which are just kind of, here's how you move your guys, here's how you get more guys on the board. That's it, that's a single deck of cards right there. You'll have a hand of three of those. And you've got to play a migration card. And then if you have, some of those other special cards, you can play one of those on your turn as well. So at most you're going to be playing one, sometimes two cards on your turn. You very rarely play all three. So the, your card deck is the other timer for the game. The first faction to use all of their cards to have played their last one, that triggers the end game as well. Game ends at the end of that round. But as you can see, oh I've got a bunch of these ones are the same. So we've got, you add four cubes to the board and it tells you, add four cubes, between the St. Louis and Sacramento boxes, or in any region along the Union Pacific Railroad. Very simple. And then it says move two groups of up to two regions. You just do what it says. So if the uh, if this card is played, you would take four cubes from the ready box, and you would put those, and they say split it any way you want between St. Louis and Sacramento. Let's say we put them all on St. Louis, and then you move three groups, two regions. You could say, I want to move these guys onto the board, out of St. Louis onto here. I want to move these guys, or I want to move these guys. They can move two regions, so we'll go one, two. And then these guys are going to move just one over here, for example. And that's something that they can do when your brown guys, when it's their turn, they can kind of bring along some blue dudes as well. So they can kind of carry those with some kind of um, influence movement there. And then where you've got places where it's mixed factions, you roll dice and you fight. It's as simple as that. Combat is resolved simply from rolling dice. Um, and if you kind of watched our review, we talked about a couple of different mechanics that you get. Um, 
these guys that moved in here, because there's only a single colored faction opposing them, these, these Indians can spring a, an ambush. Down here, where there's both red and orange, they can't spring an ambush, they're just not working in concert, I guess. So right here, before combat, the red player rolls the dice, and they get nothing. If they'd have rolled a hit on their dice, they would just do a wound before any combat happened. Wounds are taken from the largest fact, the largest of the factions here, so they're going to take one because they've got the most, and it simply goes into this casualty box over here, which has a lot of guys in it. And then you just keep rolling off. So the settlers have three brown guys. These are the settler dice. They're going to roll at most two. They only have two and two cavalry dice, because you can see there's two blue pieces. So they roll dice. And what we got here? We got three, we got two hits and a miss. And then we have, it's hard to see because these are playtests, but this is a, it's a truce symbol. And the enemy rolls a dice as well. They can roll their red dice just like they did before. Oh, fantastic. And they rolled also a truce symbol. Hits are exchanged, so we just kill him. He goes into the casualty box, and that would be it. Now, if there were other guys here, the hits are all exchanged, and because both sides rolled a truth symbol, the combat immediately ends. No more hits are assigned. Like, you, you assign your hits, no more rounds of combat are done. And then the side with more power these guys have got more guys in this base. They are going to decide where these dudes retreat to. If they go to somewhere adjacent, well, we'll put them over here. You can you you can put them there. So that's how kind of how that truce symbols work. Everything else is just hits and misses. And when you roll the miss, a blank side, it's the I want to call it a command decision kind of thing. You can use that to retreat your guys out of combat if you want to. So if you're winning, you can bring guys back and move them into different places for, for strategic reasons or to kind of protect certain forces. Or if you're losing, you, you, you might roll very poorly. Oh, I've got to take one hit and I've got two retreats. Well, I'll take a hit and then I'll, I'll uh, cut my losses kind of thing and move back. And there, there's a lot of strategy and depth in how that's done. Um, as, as for, but that's really it. Combat is... Roll, 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 do you hit, do you miss, and you keep going until one, one side is dead or not in there. Or they've all retreated, and then the combat's over. Control of a region is quite simply, do I have guys in there, and does the enemy not? So this is controlled by the US faction. This is controlled by the US faction, because remember they control these purple guys. These orange and red ones control these factions, that's controlled by the Indians. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's ever possible to have it contested. Um, sometimes, yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, in this instance you fight it over until someone's kind of got that. Um, you can see here these little yellow wagons, that's kind of the wagon trains. Each turn these yellow cubes get from St. Louis, they just they go along these trails that kind of split the board up, trying to get all the way out west. They just move. All they do is move. They move, move, move. You don't have any control over that. The only control you do have is when there's decisions to be made, you can choose which trail they go on. But once you set them on that path, they just go. So you have, as the US player, an onus to get your settlers and to get your cavalry out as far down the trail as possible to protect them. Because the Indians player has to kill all of the settlers and all of the, um, all of the cavalry before they can start killing the covered wagons, these yellow cubes. However, if they do, or if they catch any on their own, which happens quite a lot, they just go. Then they become victory points for the Indians player. The Indians player is going to score a lot of victory points if they can get those killed. Difficult to do, but that's a, a very, very important kind of strategy for the Indians to pursue. So, but that's really kind of a look of all that is. The cavalry are the kind of a stronger faction for the US. The settlers are very weak, but they're used to build the railroad and as cannon fodder, which is sad to say. And then, um, the orange and the red northern and southern plains indians tribes are kind of somewhere in between uh they got decent hit dice they they can get a lot of guys out um but and that's that's basically how you play it it's very very simple 
um, the, the biggest part here is just making sure you can get this railroad built. Because how the game plays is that you have this little bag and you just draw for turn activation. If I have draw, purple. So it's going to be purple's turn. And purple have some things that they're going to go through and they're going to do that. And eventually, you'll draw the black cube. Let's see. We'll get these guys out. Pretend they were never there. So when you draw the black cube, that means it's kind of the railroad's turn. And you try to build the railroad from each end. Each of these railroad heads. In these first sections on the west coast here, you see that you have these kind of mountain spaces. You're going to roll two settled dice. And you're trying to get these hits. Anything else is a nothing. You roll the dice, and it, for every hit that you get, up to two, so you get nothing. But if you roll hits, you would put the cubes out. One, two. They just fill up the, the next spaces, and they go through. So this is very difficult to do. It's roll one in six chance to get any, just to get one out. Um, and, and so th th this is very slow going. On this end, you just automatically put them out based on how many are there. So adjacent to these boxes, I've got two guys. So I'm going to put one, two. There's no rolling, that's just it. If I had had a third guy in here, I can place three railroad cubes. Three is the max that it can do. And that's kind of, that's automatic. You don't have to roll the dice. So that goes much quicker. Once you're able to get out of these mountains and stop chucking dice, and if you can get these guys out of Sacramento, let's say they were able to kind of get out here, and these Indians have to retreat. Well now, now we start, start to get into some real business. Because that, that railroad cube's going to lay three here and three here. And you'll see that's going to close that gap very, very quickly. That's going to score great points for the U.S. So this whole railroad aspect down here creates some real, real depth of strategy that's way more than just, oh, I'm just trying to capture a number of regions and that's how many victory points I get. Because this railroad has all those points to it. It does a lot of stuff. It forces you to position your guys to try and get this going. Also, you'll see, at least in the beginning here, it protects your... your um, your wagon trains as well, having guys in those spots. But on top of that, this, this dictates how you can put guys out. Remember we looked at this card here, and it says you can add four cubes between St. Louis and Sacramento boxes, or in any region along the Union Pacific Railroad. So look here along Union Pacific, I can put my guys out on any box adjacent to these black cubes that I've got. So suddenly I've got all this freedom. I've got these four guys that were in my in my settlers ready box. They weren't, but they are. I can put them out anywhere I want along here. And that really puts a lot of pressure on the Indians player to kind of get at me, to thin these out, to get my guys out, and to, to prevent this from getting built in the first place. Because now I can just start dumping these here. My wagon trains are almost instantly protected. And, and that can cause, a, be a real thorn in the side for the Indians players. They're not able to snag any more of those kind of unprotected wagons. So again, a lot of depth of strategy that comes from that very simple kind of planning there. So what we'll do is we'll kind of get some pieces together here, and we'll just show you how, how a, what a turn might kind of look like. So we'll put all these cubes and all these discs around. And there's a little bit of a mess here, so we'll just kind of generically clean some of these up. I'm going to remove these guys. Keep one there just for fun. Get that guy in here. Take these guys out. So you just shake up these and you say, who's going first? The orange player is going first. And so the orange player has their deck of cards. They've got three of these in their hand. And you say, okay, well, I've got a couple of these war parties which are going to put two cubes out in any of my orange regions I control. And then they can move two groups, two regions, or two groups, one region. Well, this is the better card, so that's what we're gonna go with. And they also have this guy. I can use, in addition to my war party card, war party card right here, I can add three cubes to one southern region. 
and settlers roll one die in a southern region, you choose this turn. So if there's one particular region I feel like I'm going to do combat in, the settlers are only going to roll one die instead of two. So I'm going to put that right here. So I'm going to say, you can only do one dice in this region here. So the orange player looks over here in their pool of guys and think, oh, this is not very much. I can put two cubes out into any region. Well, I'm going to put it right here. And now, they've got two left in here. Well, this card allows them to put three out. So we have to be careful with what we do with our moves here. We can move two groups, two regions each. So this group, we're going to move out here. And then this group here, from the casualties box, we move those into these, kind of into the ready box. Now, unfortunately, we can't use these as reinforcements this turn. So we still only have two to play with um, from this uh, Quanta Parker card, but we'll put them out anyway. We're going to actually take this region just so we have control of it, and then we'll put one up here as well so that maybe we can come and take this purple region that's going to score us a victory point. So now we've done all of our moves. We're going to do this combat here. Now, because it's Indians attacking... Settlers, there's no ambushes or anything like that, so we don't have to worry about that. We simply roll off. Now, why we could bring these two red cubes is that for every two orange cubes, I can bring one red cube. So they kind of, they bring them along. It's not like other games where you can just kind of like, I bring everyone in the spot. You have to count, and there's, there's a little bit of strategy in how you put your guys out and try and, try and manipulate how you can take losses. But that's really it there. So basically we just roll off. So Indian players got two orange and two red. And the settlers have got two brown. And you chuck the dice. Now let's see what we got. And it's whew, a lot of misses there. So the brown player has no hits. And the Indian player has one hit. So they will inflict one hit. So they're going to remove one brown cube, and he's going to go to the casualty box. And that's it. Now, the, in, the, the Settlers player's got these two kind of misses, so to speak, that command decisions. They're actually going to optionally retreat to this guy. He's going to move up here. Oh, he's going to move back here. That's going to make them a bit stronger. So instead of fighting to the death, he's, because he's got that blank side, he can use that to retreat. But the Indians were successful. They took that with great force. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And then you go draw the next one, and we pulled blue. So it's the cavalry's turn. And the cavalry also have their deck of 15 cards. They're going to draw three of them, and we take a look at what they've got. They have a couple of engagement cards, which are similar to those migration ones, just slightly different. Oh, and they've got Custer. Okay. So you play Custer immediately. You put four blue cubes in the region with the largest northern uh, plains indian concentration and then you immediately resolve battle and this is this is this only card in the game where it says play immediately you don't have a choice about this you just got to do this before you can do anything else as soon as you draw that card so we'll do that we take four of these and we put it in the number with the largest concentration of red cubes which is up here so we'll get those on the board and then we immediately resolve combat now the caveat being here Cavalry rolls, only one die per battle round. It's Custer's last stand, and it's not going to go very well for him, because they only have a couple of dice to roll. So we've got the blue dice, and the blue dice is very nice. It's got three hits on it, and it's got one truce there as well. And the red dice have a couple of hits. One, I think they've got two hits each, and that's about it. And they're going to roll the bones. And we have, oof, that's bad. So we've got two hits from the Indians and one hit from the cavalry. So we're gonna have one northern Indian's gonna die and then two of these cavalry are gonna die. And then we simply go again. And the next battle round, we have a truce symbol and a retreat from the Indians and one hit from the cavalry. So the cavalry are gonna inflict a hit and then, oof, the Indians are gonna decide to not retreat so we just go again. Here we've got 
a hit from the Indians and a retreat from the cavalry. So we do, they inflict a hit and these guys are gonna retreat. Now, what you might notice is that we had this truce symbol. Well, the truce symbol only goes into effect if both sides roll it. And as soon as both sides roll it, that's when it goes into effect. So we don't have to worry about that. But that's combat, so that was doing that. That was a card we had to play. And now, we're gonna go back and we're gonna play our normal engagement card. So we add three cubes to St. Louis. One of those may go in Sacramento. And because Sacramento is all locked up, these guys can't leave until we break through the Rocky Mountains, which we'll pretend like that, that was open. It's, it's not worth it. Oh, we've only got two guys left. That's rats. So we can't even put three guys out. So we're gonna put two dudes uh, in St. Louis. And then we can move two groups up to two regions. And in this instance, we've got so many cavalry in the casualties. We're definitely gonna spend one of our moves to move all of the cavalry out of the casualties into ready for next turn. And then what we'll do is we'll bring these guys on the board. He can move two regions. So we'll go, um, wow, not in a good spot here. We'll just go one, two up here so they can help. We'll kind of expand up here and do some protection there. But that's it. That's all it is for the, for the blue turn there. And then we just pick another one. And we got the settlers. This is the brown disc. So the settlers are going next. And the settlers have, so they've got two migrations and they have a safe passage. This is a reaction card. You can kind of play this when you're attacking you say, ah, no attacks against the yellow wagons until the end of the current card turn. So that's a good way to protect us. We'll hang on to that. What we'll do is we'll choose, let's see, we'll choose this migration here. So we're going to add four cubes between St. Louis and Sacramento or in any region along the Union Pacific Railroad. So we're probably gonna do this second option. We've got four cubes from the ready box, and we can put them anywhere adjacent to this railroad. So what we would do, I think we're gonna, we're gonna put a bunch in here. And that way we can force march these cavalry when we move them out to do an attack here. And I'm gonna stick an extra one. Hmm. We'll, I'm going to stick in here to help protect these guys, just, just to make sure. And then, with this card, we can move three groups up to one region each. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll, we'll move these guys here. Again, two brown cubes can move one blue cube. Two brown cubes, one blue cube. Very simple. They're going to move up there. Uh, we're actually going to move these brown guys up as well, because these, these yellow ones are going to auto-move down this trail, so we want to kind of protect every spot they're going through. Um, I think, and the, this trail is going to go up here, so this is going to be a bloodbath. So that's actually a very tough decision to make there of what they're going to do. They're going to they're going to go up here and attempt to to whittle down some numbers. Probably not a smart idea, but we'll try it nonetheless. And for a third a third group, we can move. Let's move these guys. We're going to move two dudes, and they're going to move up here. That's what we'll do. And there's a stacking limit of eight units per side, but the yellow units don't count towards that. So we just gotta make sure that we're conscious of that as we're playing. Um, so we've got some combats to resolve. We've got this one down here and this one up here. Um, well, let's try this one, because I think that's gonna be a bit more interesting. And we're basically rolling all the dice that we have. There's no ambush, because there's both orange and red units available. So we chuck everything and see what we get. And it looks like we've got a hit on the orange dice, and everything else is no good. So the orange are going to inflict one hit. We have to take it from the faction with the largest number. So we've got to take it from the settlers. Go to the casualty box. Now we do have a lot of retreats here if we want them. Um, and I think we're going to risk one more round of combat before we start considering that. So let's shovel the dice again. Oof. So we've got settlers score a hit. Indians score a hit, and everything else is okay. So we're going to exchange hits. Orange have to take the hit for the uh, Indian side. Settlers, once again, take a hit for the US side. Oh, and we're going to risk combat one more turn before we have to think about those. 
Oh my gosh, we're all on the same things over and over again here. So we've got to hit either side. And oof, a lot of misses. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna we're gonna sacrifice the brown one here and we're gonna lose the orange one. Because these were equal, we can take from whichever one we want, but that means we lose a brown dice. So we're gonna roll one fewer dice for the US side this time. And now we're just gonna chuck them one more time. Oh, that's very bad. So we've got two two US hits and three Indian hits. So all of these guys are gonna die. That was a terrible, terrible result. And two of these are gonna die. We'll take one of each. So that's it. Disastrous, disastrous attack. But so it goes. And we resolve the same thing here as well. So for this combat up here, it's probably, having seen what this one ended up like, it's probably gonna be much worse. Once again, because there's a mixture of enemy units, there's not an ambush. Now uh, we're simply just gonna roll dice either side and see what happens. And this time we get nothing for the Indians. They get two true symbols which don't do anything. There's one hit for the settlers, which is good news. So the Indians will take one loss. And then we go again. Oops. They're gonna roll loans. Wow. Where was this rolling during the game? Uh, same thing. So they're gonna take a loss here, and the Indians might take this opportunity to retreat. They're gonna retreat three guys, and we're gonna send them back down here. So now they're only gonna roll two dice a piece, and the Indians are just trying to get out there and cut their losses. Oh wow. So they're gonna take one loss, and then they can retreat their last guy, he's gonna retreat up here. And that's because we had a and, it, and they were attacked once, and then they had two losses here. These are just kind of blank sides, like we said. So that's it. That's the end of the brown turn. They've done everything that they wanted to do. So then we go back to drawing a disc, and we pull, Ooh, let's see, black cube. So this is the railroad. So this is where the fun begins. We're gonna build this, this transcontinental railroad. Oh wow, okay. So this was actually a disaster for the settlers because what they would do on this railroad head is they would build up to three if they had units adjacent to it. Well, I foolishly moved those guys out. That was a dumb strategic decision. And then these guys got wiped. So there's none left here, the one guy moved out. So nothing happens on this end. And that is a, frankly, a disaster um, for, for, for the settlers. And what they'll do for this end, because they've still got to blast through this last mountain space, they're just gonna chuck two dice, looking for hits. Got nothing. So nothing happens on that railroad turn. Now, if we had brown cubes here, you would simply just place them out, no die rolls. If I roll those dice on this end, and if I rolled, where are those hits? Where are those sweet, sweet hits? Here you go. So we got a hit here, where's the other one? So if we just called hits on those, then we'd add, then we'd add the cubes. And once you're out of these brown mountain squares here, if you look here, they all say that mountain on them. Then once you've kind of once you've got this one covered up, it's the same rules as this end. So you just want to get those settlers out of Sacramento. They start moving up the board, and you just join this up very quickly. So disaster for the railroad turn there. That's very bad for the U.S. faction. You don't want that to happen during the regular game. So then we got the last one here. So we've got, I think two or three more turns or, or discs. So we've got the yellow, and the yellow is a special um, instance. Let's just take some of these off of this victory point track. It did not go well for me during our game. So you have these wagon trains ready down here. Each turn you get two and you put them in St. Louis and then every wagon train is gonna move. You don't have any choice about it, it just moves. So these guys are gonna move up here. Luckily we moved our settlers up there. These guys are gonna move here out in the open, not great. These guys are gonna move down here with these settlers. That's good, so they've at least got some protection. And these guys, we can choose. I think we're gonna go down this end because this is very scary to have to move through. Right now, we're in a good spot where we can get them um, into safety in our purple regions and out through into California. That's it. Yellow turn is very simple that way. It's kind of just this automated wave of uh, covered wagons going across and it's the US's job to just protect those as best they can. So the next disc we're gonna pull is the purple one. Oh, fantastic. So purple one is the purple faction is controlled by the blue player if you're playing a multiplayer game. 
So they get one purple cube and they can put it anywhere in Mexico, in Canada up the top, or on a purple region that is adjacent to that. So that you can't start them down here or put them kind of anywhere else. You, you can't even start them here and here. You've got to start them kind of on the edge of the boards. So in this instance, we're going to put it down here. And then you can move one group of Indians. And that is, that is not a lot. Sometimes you've got to make the hard choice and make your only move getting these out of the casualty box. Because we've got three there, not too worried about that. We're simply going to move these guys down here and attempt to combat. Because there's only the one um, orange piece, they're going to try and ambush, which they do not. And then we just roll bones. And we get one hit a piece. So we just remove one. Orange is dead and purple is dead. And that's the purple turn. Very, very simple. The purple are trying to cause havoc in the flanks of, of the Plains Indians. And once, once the US player breaks out of these mountains and can start rushing guys out, this closes very quickly and things can get out of hand um, <laughs> for, for the Indians. It can be a very hard time. So then the last disc is the red one. We put the red, mark, red square down here. And they have a deck of cards. So they're going to draw three, so we've got a couple of interesting cards here. So we've got the war party, put out three cubes, move a bunch. They have this guy, use an addition to a war party. Before cavalry block is drawn, this card turn at three cubes. Unfortunately, we've already drawn the cavalry, so we can't use this. Um, what do we have here? You can use this in addition to a war party. Add one cube to five controlled northern regions. No combat allowed for any cards played this draw turn. So that's pretty useless. That's going to stop us from doing any combats. So we'll just play this war party. So they're going to put out three cubes from their ready box. And they can put them in any of these northern plains regions. We're going to remember we've got some stacking limits here. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick them right here. In this box in Salt Lake City. Or what would become Salt Lake City I guess. Not sure it's been founded quite yet. And then we can move three groups up to two regions. So what we'll do is we'll bring in these five and they can bring along that one orange guy and then we, so there's five there, we're gonna bring in the, this group here, one, two, they're gonna do the same thing, they can bring along one orange guy. So now we're at our stacking limit of eight there and then we've got one more group that we can move. Let's, hmm, Let's try and, and we would, we're going to move down here and try and pepper these. So to start with, we'll do this down here. So purple is going to do an ambush, which they do not successfully do. And then we just duke it out. There's two reds and a purple. And nothing happens for the purple. They are killed off because the red scored one hit. Up here... Let's see, where is it? Okay, it's this one here. So we've got a big combat here. Now, to kill one of these yellow cubes, you need two hits. And the yellow cubes, each one defends with two of these. So you'll always be rolling two of these settler dice. Again, there's only one hit on these settler dice. So not very powerful. It's kind of difficult to defend with, but at least you've got something. But because we've got this mixed warband, the Indians player is going to chuck all the dice. So we're just going to roll everything together. Wow. That's what you want to see as a US player. That's four Indian misses and one hit. So the red guys are going to take a hit. And then we simply go again. There you go. That's, that's a little bit more of what you'd expect to see. So there's three Indians hits. They can use two to kill one of these guys. And this, I toss down the casualties, this goes on their victory point track. So now they've got like five on their victory point track. They're never removed from there. They don't go to like casualties. Once they're dead, they're dead, dead. And they go over there scoring. And the, uh, the settlers didn't do anything there. Even though there's only one of these left, one the yellow cube, they always roll two settler dice. So we go again. They didn't do anything and nothing happens here. Even though there's a truce on each side, uh, because this is um, 
a U.S. They're kind of a wagon. They're just kind of defending, defending, defending. They're not like an active major U.S. faction. They're kind of this minor sub-faction. We just keep going on there. And we're going to roll again. And I think we still only have one hit and a couple of truce markers on either side. We're going to go again. So this is a situation where you start getting into dice chucking. And then the Indians are going to do two hits. So they're going to kill the last one who's going to go out swinging. And he's going to kill one more Indian. So we've got a red one dead and then the yellow one to the victory track. And that's a whole turn. It's honestly, it's as simple as that. And you just do this over and over again until any one faction that has a deck of cards uses their very last one. Or once this gets fully linked up in the middle, then it's over. And that's really an overview of how you play Plains Indians Wars. It's not a complex game, but it has some rich strategy, and it is fun. That's the most important part, and I can't stress that enough. It is fun. Building this gives you so much extra work, but so much extra strategy and kind of depth to the game. It's not just all well, moving to areas and trying to capture a number of areas. This is really, really cool, and the Indians are desperately trying to strategically get those settlers out so they can't build the railroad. There's a real back and forth here is, is this progress is trying to be made or stymied. Very, very fun. Um, so that's Plains Indians Wars again. This is on the GMT P500. Um, so if you like what you see, absolutely check it out. Again, this isn't final production quality. This is a playtest copy. So I expect to see you know, maybe some um, bit more kind of richness and depth to the map. Obviously the cards, these, we, these are just kind of printed out. You'll get premium cards. You'll get premium uh, dice as well. And these just have stickers on them. Um, so don't judge, don't judge the packaging. You'll get a beautiful packaging. GMT is known for their good quality components, but the gameplay itself just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what that looks like. So appreciate you hanging around and watching. Thank you very much. We've been the playersaid.com.